Hey everyone, I'm Almar of AlmarsGuides.com and in this video here I'm going to be talking about the Clerk class from Classic EQ all the way until the end of Prophecy of Row. So this is going to be an audio version of the written guide that you see on screen here. More or less I'm going to be giving you the same sort of information as the guide, although I'm not going to be reading the guide directly. I'm just going to be more or less talking off the top of my head while using the guide as a... Uh, for lack of better words, a guide of where to go with what I'm saying. So the first thing I'd like to say is the game changes a lot beyond Prophecy of Row, which is the reason that I decided to end this class guide at Prophecy of Row. So many AAs get added into the game and a whole bunch of your main spell lines start to change, and I, I, I figured that would be the best spot to end it. So one of the things that does not change during this era and into the future is Clerk's are basically the best raid healers and the best healers in the game period they are what i would describe as the second best class in the entire game warriors being the the best and most important class you need warriors in order to tank difficult targets and you need clerks to heal those warriors without that you're not going to do difficult raids and that's more or less what it all comes down to in the early game up until I think Planes of Power is when it starts getting phased out, you're going to be doing something called Complete Heal Rotations, aka CH Rotations, on your clerics. This is a miserable experience, and I pity basically every cleric that has to do it, because it is... I mean, Complete Heal is one of the worst heals in the entire game, let's face it. Ten, ten seconds locked into the heal being unable to do anything, so much can go wrong in those ten seconds. And, uh... I don't encourage you to use complete heals in group content. I would encourage you to use ethereal light or anything that's better than complete heal, which is basically everything. But anyway, clerks can't solo. Clerks are dependent on groups, which is probably one of the reasons they're the best healers, and that's something else you should keep in mind if you're going to play a cleric as well. You're not going to be able to do really anything without, pe without other people or without boxing other tunes to go with you. So as far as your important stats and focus effects, so stats are the biggest way that you can upgrade your class until you start capping out your stats. So you're going to want wisdom and stamina primarily with some strength too because you, you wear plate gear and plate gear is heavy. Aside from that, you're going to want mana, armor class, and mana regen. Those, uh, those are important as well. Mana regen is a secondary stat, so keep that in mind. Um, once you get max wisdom in the context of a raid environment, the only way for you to get stronger would be for you to get more mana and mana regen. Armor class is only really going to help you in a group environment because that's when you're going to be getting hit more often by mobs. One thing to note too is that you want to get a shield with the most armor class possible on it because um, that won't Shields, the AC on shields don't count towards your soft cap. They just go straight towards your overall AC, which is good. And I have a few more pieces of information on my site, as you can see here, such as how much mana you'll get per wisdom point and a few other things like that. So starting in Planes of Power and becoming more and more common as each expansion releases, you're going to start noticing heroic stats on your gear. So in Planes of Power, you're going to get a very minor amount of heroic stats, and then eventually by the time you reach Secrets of Fader, basically every piece of gear is going to have heroic stats on it. And almost all of your character's benefits are going to come from heroic stats from that point onward. Your normal stats are going to be capped out. So heroic stats come with a, uh, a soft cap, which is something that you'll want to keep into mind, and that will limit how much benefit you can get from each of your heroic stats. So if you go into the game and you click on stats here in your, well, open inventory, then click on stats. In the second tab, you're going to see your heroic mods in the top right. If you mouse over these, it's going to tell you what your caps are and how much you'll get benefits from them. So eventually with these, you're going to hit diminishing returns. So eventually you can see zero out of 150. Uh, that's because I'm level one. On this character but eventually you're going to say once you get it, it says increases by four per point of heroic dexterity up until 150 once you get 150 heroic dexterity you're start you're going to start getting less per point and that would be your soft cap after that you're going to get diminishing returns so that's something to keep in mind and it's something important for you to uh 
pay attention to. Due to the fact that there is soft caps, you're going to want to space out your heroic stats a little bit more than you would otherwise. For example, uh, on clerks, you're going to want heroic stamina, heroic wisdom, and heroic agility the most. And you're going to probably want to get a little bit of each, is what I would say. With heroic wisdom being the most important for raid environments, and heroic stamina and agility being more important for group environments. So, focus effects. Focus effects are added in Lucklin, and, uh, well, actually, you can see them on gear before Lucklin, but they activate in Lucklin. And, uh, they're quite good. They're also how you gain benefits to your character past getting stats and gear, etc. So, mana preservation, this is going to reduce the overall amount of mana that with each cast, which is very, very good. It's probably your best focus effect. Another thing to mention, too, is... In Omens of War and Lost Dungeons of Norath, you will start to get augmentations that come with focus effects. This will allow you to use your best in slot gear and put an aug into that gear, which will give you the focus effect that you need. It allows you a lot more customization, unlike early EQ, where sometimes you're using gear you don't really want to use because it has a focus effect on it that you need. So, Spell Haste, or sorry, Improved Healing, this is your second biggest an important focus effect. Obviously, you being a healer, you're going to want improved healing. Spell haste, obviously, you'll cast faster, so that's very important too. Extended enhancement, that's going to increase the duration of your buffs. Clerks are going to be doing a lot of buffs, so you want that. Extended range, that increases the range of your spells, which useful for a variety of different situations and scenarios. And then the last three are going to be me mediocre at best, Improved dodge, improved parry slash block, and in reagent conservation. So, improved dodge and improved parry slash block is going to give you a minor amount of survivability, but it's enough survivability to where you will want to get them. It's not like they're so minor that you'll want to skip out on them entirely. You, once you're min-maxing, you'll definitely want to get them. And reagent conservation. So, this depends kind of a little bit on what you are doing as a cleric. Are you using your DI line of spells that require Peridots and Reagents? You should be. If you are, then Reagent Conservation will save you a little bit of money. A few of your other spell lines require stuff too. Peridots, Pearls, and um, I can't remember what else. But yeah, I do know you have lines that require Peridots and Pearls. So now we're going to move into your important spells, skills, and AAs. So as a clerk, you're going to primarily use alteration and ab abjuration. You're probably going to want to specialize in alteration since that's what you use for your heal healing skills. And that's what you're going to be using most often. So you have direct heals, which are heals that basically heal your target immediately. And then you also have heal over times, which are heals that are going to heal your target over time. There's also going to be, as I mentioned earlier, your complete heal, which sucks well subjective you can tell i'm quite biased against complete heal it doesn't suck but it does suck at the same time and i'm sure most clerks will be able to agree with me about that it's it's a great day in everquest when you can stop using that heal you're going to get group versions of your heal over times and direct heals also if you do um a lot of the velius armor quests the legs you get are going to get word of health on them or whatever it's called which is your group heal and that will actually be a zero mana cost group heal, which is amazing. I recommend you click that all the time. I do, personally. So for buffs, you're going to get the best buff spells in the game. And they are going to be called HP Type 1, Symbol, and Armor Class. So HP Type 1 is basically a whole bunch of other classes. Or I shouldn't say a whole bunch, but Clerks, Druids, and I believe Shamans get HP Type 1 buffs. And they won't stack with each other. So an HP type 1 can stack with an HP type 2. So for example, on shamans, their talisman is HP type 2. And uh, I believe it is at least. And that will stack with the clerk buff. And druid, considering their skin buff is HP type 1, it will not stack with the clerk buff. So that's something to keep in mind. Eventually in Velius, you're going to get a spell called uh, Agolism, or Agolism, however it is pronounced. That will give you HP type 1, symbol, and armor class all in one. And that same logic is going to continue as time goes on. 
they're going to give you upgrades to your Ego line and basically give you all three of these buffs in one. So from Classic to Lucklin, not much changes for you as a Cleric. You're going to get your Self-Shielding line in Lucklin, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. You're also going to get your Spell Haste in LDON and your Damage Absorb line in LDON. Both of those are very useful and you'll be using them often. Omens of War uh, gives you upgrades to basically everything, but not much new. And the next big thing that's added is in Prophecy of Row. You're going to get your aura in that expansion. And we're going to talk about all of this. So let's look at the main line, spell lines for clerics that are worth pointing out. So self-shielding and mana regen is what you get in Luckland, which I was just talking about. This is, the first one you get is called Blessed Armor of the Risen. If we go to Alakazam, so we can see it increases your max hit points, your armor class, your HP when cast, and gives you mana per tick. This is a, uh, it stacks with basically all your other HP buffs, and uh, yeah, there's no reason not to use it, more or less, since it's a self buff that stacks with everything else. You're also going to get a self buff called Yawp. You get Yawp early in the game, and essentially it gives you, it boosts your melee capabilities until you get to Yawp 5 or greater, and then they start giving you mana regen with the Yawp. Eventually, you'll get an AA version of that as well. And um, it's worth using, especially if you're not mounted. For those of you who are always on a mount, that will cancel the mana regen from Yelp. So it's something to keep in mind. Spell Haste, like I said, you get this in, pla in uh, Planes of Power Plus, And it is uh, important for you to use. In LDON, you're going to get Bulwark. It's, more f it's kind of what the line is known as. And also Damage Absorb. So Protection of Vi and Bulwark of Vi are the ones that I'm talking about in LDON. And you'll be using them constantly. Basically, every time you buff the tank or buff the group, you're going to buff them with those as well. Divine Intervention. So Divine Intervention is a spell that you get early on. And basically what it does is when your target suffers a killing blow, they're instantly healed to full, I believe it is. I believe it gives them a complete heal when they suffer a killing blow. And... uh that is very important for you to use on tanks, especially in raid environments, because there's a lot of spike damage, and you can't always uh, safely predict when all of that spike damage is going to come. So it's a good one. It's a good one for you to use. Basically, it, a lot of people won't blame you if you don't use it on gr in groups, because uh, your tanks are going to die a lot less in groups, and it also costs money to cast the spell. So, But that's up to you if you want to you know, fork over the two emeralds or whatever it costs in your era to cast it. So the next spell line is Divine Aura and Divine Barrier. These are DA spells, is what they're known as. This will give you invulnerability for a short period of time, usually 18 seconds. And you're also going to get AA versions of these same spells, which will per means you don't have to ever memorize them again once you get the AA versions. They, uh, those buffs are situationally useful. There's various situations that clerics will use them. Uh, it's up to you to use them and learn those situations. I personally never really bother because most of the time that I'm playing a clerk, I'm boxing it. And uh, I don't really need those spells. So you're also going to get some resist buffs as a clerk. You're going to get re resist magic, resist disease, resist fire, resist cold. And also maybe uh, something that helps with curses which we're actually going to talk about that in a bit with Curative Magic. You're also going to get Resurrection spells on your Clerk. Early in the game, up until Omens of War, you're the only class that's going to be able to res. Well, Necromancers can res, but it's going to cost them an Essence Emerald, and it's a 93% res, not a 96%. So those are things you want to keep in mind. Uh, that's a very, very useful thing to have, is the reses. And... Druids will get a res in Omens of War, same with Shamans, then eventually Seeds of Destruction adds Mercenaries, which will get 96% reses, and then eventually, basically everybody gets a 96% res. So, Invisibility versus Undead, you're going to get that on your Clerks. You're going to also get Curative Magic, like I said, you're going to be able to cure por uh, Curse, Poison, and Disease spells. In uh, Prophecy of Roe, you're also going to get this, or uh, Aura of the Pious. So this is Basically, once Prophecy of Row at, is added, that's when you kind of get shoehorned into the tank group because of this aura right here. So this aura will 
absorb some incoming melee damage to anybody who stands close enough to you. And it only works on people who are in your group, and for that reason, you're basically going to be in tank groups. And you're going to want to decrease the damage that the tanks take with that aura, plus you're the tank healer, so it makes sense for you to be in their group anyway. Clerks are also going to get stuns, which uh, are very useful. They, that will help you. It's basically the only crowd control you get on a clerk aside from root. So, for example, say you are in Kale Dracul and you're dealing with a whole bunch of mobs that gate on you and complete heal. There's a lot of clerks in there. And uh, stun can help you with that. So, for example, let's say Mr. Uh, Ice Giant decides to start channeling a complete heal. You can hit him with a stun and interrupt his complete heal, and then usually that's enough time for a group to kill him. If you are a cleric and you cycle your stuns and use your stuns well like this, you'll, you'll make friends. So Pacify is your last main spell line that I feel like pointing out, and what that will do is it'll allow you to pacify mobs and it will allow the puller to separate them easier. Which basically just means yay single pulls instead of pulling an entire group of mobs at a time. So now that we're getting into our AAs, let's hop into the game and start going over some of the AAs. We're only going to go over the AAs that you can activate because otherwise we'll be here all day. So Bestow Divine Aura, this is that clicky DA AA that I told you about. We also have Celestial Regeneration, which is one of your better heal over time. Uh, it works on the entire group, or you can MGB it and use it on the entire raid. Divine Aura, this is another one of your clicky AAs that you get that basically gives DA. Divine Resurrection, this gives you a 100% res to an ally. However, it's, a, as you can see, 18 hour cooldown, so quite a while. Purified Soul, this will allow you to cure a target. Uh, just one target. Poison, Disease, and Curse. So it's quite useful, but you get Radiant Cure in Planes of Power, which is a group version of it, and it's better. Turn Undead. This is a... Uh, it's just a... Yeah. It's a dot and a DD that hits Undead. And if you're fighting Undead, it's useful to use, but a lot of the times, at least when boxing, I, I obviously never use it. Innate and Viz to Undead. That works. On, um, basically, you don't have to memorize the spell when you want to invis to undead. And, of course, mass group buff, which we just talked about, which allows you to cast a group buff on an entire raid. So Radiant Cure, we just talked about this too. This is basically your group version of Cure. You can use both of them, of course, if you would like, if you need to cure multiple people. But more often than not, than not I find Radiant Cure to suffice. So Divine Arbitration. This is a... Very useful spell, and what this is, or very useful AA, and what this is mostly used for is situations where the tank is very, very low damage, or sorry, very low health, and everybody else is more or less fine for health. What it does is Divine Arbitration takes the health of the entire group and basically averages it out amongst everybody with a 20% penalty, as it says. So if the tank has 5% health left and everybody else is at 100%, basically everybody's going to end up at about 80% health, which is uh, great. It'll, it's an instant cast, which will save you from death, basically. So it's useful. Starting in um, Gates of Discord, we get this Divine Avatar. It is... Um, it's melee, right? Yeah. So you really don't use that all that often. It will buff your melee and give you some health regen, but it's not that great. You, if you're soloing, that's one area that I could imagine using it, using it. Say you're doing something on your clerk anniversary or something like that, and you just need to kill something fast, popping Divine Avatar will help with that. So every class gets one of these wards eventually. You get your ward in Gates of Discord, and it sucks. We don't even... On live, we don't even use this ever. We don't put it in our group heal macros, nothing. We just completely forget that it even exists. That's how much it sucks. Spellcasting Subtlety, you'll definitely want to get this because that will decrease the amount of threat that you pull with your spells and your heals, which is always great and important. So Omens of War. 
Celestial Hammer. This is your f Swarm Pet AA. I want to say first Swarm Pet AA because I think you get another one. But it sucks. Probably just like the other one. Really, it's one of those situations, again, where you can throw it on raid bosses and stuff like that. But it's not going to be... An, like, you're not going to notice a DPS increase by using it. The best use for it is probably when you're soloing or when you're doing, you know, anniversary or something like that. When you're doing basically something that you have that you're stuck doing solo with like a mercenary. That's usually the the times that you'll be using that. Divine Retribution. So I'm pretty sure as it says, it uh when people are attacking you with melee, it has a chance of stun them. So useful when things are beating on you. Sanctuary. Okay, so Sanctuary is a fade. And it's quite a useful fade as well. Uh, every class, well not every class, well I should say every class eventually does get a fade. But in this early era, apparently clerks, monks, and um, bards are the classes that get a fade. So that's actually a pretty good one right there. That uh, It'll basically allow you to clear aggro. And if your group is dying, you can always use that and then um, run away. I believe that will pop you out of combat. It says the last target of any aggressor. So that might mean it doesn't pop you out of combat. But I'm not sure. I think it does. If it's a fade, then it does pop you out of combat. Otherwise, it's not a fade. But I believe that's a fade. So Dragons of Norath, nothing is added. Depths of Dark Hollow, that adds Silent Casting and Ward of Purity. So Silent Casting is a very useful spell. You'll be using that basically on all of your burns in the future and to decrease your threat. Ward of Purity is a ward that will cure poison and disease. It's also garbage, just like your other ward. It only does one poison and disease counter at a time, so it'll take forever to dispel the poison and disease, which usually when you actually need to dispel poison and disease, you need to dispel it fast. So that won't really work all that well on you for you. And that's all as far as your clicky AAs for a cleric go. So let's dive back into uh, into the guide with how to play clerk basics. So during classic all the way until playing the power, clerks are pretty straightforward. You'll be more or less using complete heal in raids. And as you can say, see here, I basically go on a complete complete heal rant telling you to use ethereal light instead. I also re-explain what buffs your buffs will stack with and more. And I also give you an example group heal macro here, which will show you how I use group heals when I'm boxing my clerk on live. Basically, uh, Beacon of Life is an AA that you'll eventually get. Use item Aegis of Superior Divinity as your epic 2.0. And then Celestial Regen, Divine Arbitration, and finally the group heal spell. I use the group heal last because I want that to be the last thing that goes off. I want my AAs to handle the situation before it gets to the group heal. And usually due to how the macro is set up, it won't use both the epic and divine arbitration at the same time. I'm a boxer, so even if it does, it doesn't bother me that much. But if you're a solo player, you'll probably want to have those two things separate. So that's something to keep in mind. So really the only thing I can say as far as uh, how to play is like telling you generically how to play a healer in these sorts of games. And that comes with a lot of practice. You have to watch health, um, understand when health is spiking and what you need to do in those sorts of situations and how to handle it. Uh, when you join a group, you have to be a little bit more cautious about understanding the tank and the area you're in if you're unfamiliar with that because you don't know how fast incoming damage is going to be. And more or less, a lot of being a good clerk just comes to learning these sorts of things and getting a feel for how it all works, for lack of better words. But that's really all I can explain about clerks in EQ. If I left anything out, forgot anything, or got anything wrong, please let me know in the comment section below. If you would like to see the written version of my guide, of course, you can check out my website. And aside from that, I will catch you guys around in future EverQuest videos. Peace.